There's a redstone contraption I've never understood. And I'm the guy who's meant to understand redstone contraptions, we have to fix this immediately. It is the nine digit combination lock. You press a handful of buttons and if you've got the correct combination, then your door or whatever you've got this hooked up to activates. I've built a few of them in the past, ardently following the redstone tutorial block by block, but I've never actually stopped to work out how they function, like what it is that actually allows them to work. All I know is it involves RS nor latches. That's the only piece of information that I have. So I'm going to use that and try and come up with the nine digit combination lock 10 years or 11 years or 12 years or 13 years after they were originally come up with. First thing, making it easy. I am going to break this thing down into its simplest, simplest form. So I'm going to remove the need for any kind of decoder or anything that rewires where these buttons go and I'm just going to make it a straight line, nine digits. So now I have all of my button outputs nicely lined up. There's no sort of spaghetti redstone getting them into this format. But my first guess, my first guess as to the theory of these is that, so you press one of the buttons and let's say in this example it's button number three. That is the only button that will send a redstone signal down this line and that will flip an RS nor latch at the end so the system knows that we've got the first we've got the first number correct and then that allows the signal to travel onto the next part of the combination so then so then it does it again it, it does the same thing again and then again and again for the number of digits that you have in your combination lock but then whenever you get the incorrect digit it resets all the rs null latches that works in my head. I don't know if it actually works in theory though. I feel like I'm missing something. Like how do I know? Oh gosh, how? Do, oh. It's like it, three is right now. Three is correct for the first number, but then it's incorrect for the second number. So how do I know when, when the number is correct or incorrect? Because <laughs> numbers can be both correct and incorrect depending on what stage of the combination they're at. I think I'm going to worry about incorrect codes in a little bit. For now, I'm going to focus purely on just the correct combination and getting that detected. I can't really explain what I'm doing or why I'm doing it, but this feels better than the other system. Okay, okay, okay. So, let's see. Let's see if this idea works. So, the theory is, when I press the number three, redstone torch turns off and redstone torch turns on, that RS null latch is now flipped. And then this RS null latch has also been depowered. So, when I hit the number two... That is interesting. That is interesting. I don't know if that's good, but it the, it's working-ish. I don't know. There's probably a way around it. I don't know. The reason that this works is this RS null latch can only be triggered once this RS null latch has been triggered because then the comparator won't be powering the RS null latch anymore. So that means it can actually detect what's happening over here because when this is being powered, whether this powers it or not is completely irrelevant because it's still always being powered by the comparator. I have no clue if that made any sense. But I think it's safe to say I am rather excited because if I type in the code 3, 2, 1, 9, the redstone lamp turns on. So our combination has been detected as being correct. And then pressing this little button right here should reset it. So now we just need to make it so that this line gets activated whenever we enter in an incorrect number. But first, a quick message from today's sponsor, ExpressVPN. This is me. I'm currently out in the Highlands of Scotland, staying in a small cabin, making videos, shooting a lot of photos, and getting creatively inspired by the incredible rugged landscapes. But just because I'm out in the middle of nowhere, it doesn't mean I'm protected against people trying to steal my data. I'm using other people's Wi-Fi and unsecured public Wi-Fi networks to post and upload things, and that means I'm open to my connection being intercepted and my data being stolen. You see, all it takes is some cheap equipment and some basic computer computer knowledge and anyone using the same Wi-Fi network as you can steal your information. Thankfully, I'm using ExpressVPN, which creates an encrypted tunnel that my data travels through, keeping all of my data safe. It also means I can access shows on streaming services that aren't available in Scotland. For example, Shawshank Redemption, which is generally considered to be the best film of all time, isn't available on the UK version of Netflix. Thankfully though, it is available on the Canadian version of Netflix, so connecting to a server over there means I can now watch this masterpiece for the thousandth time. And obviously this applies to all the different streaming services. All of them have different libraries for different countries, and now you can access all of them. Head over to expressvpn.com forward slash mumbo to find out how you can get three months free. That is expressvpn.com forward slash mumbo. 
Right, now I'm going back inside, it's really cold out here. So getting back to the part of the redstone circuit that is detecting incorrect inputs, which I know what you're thinking, surely that's really, really simple. The only numbers that matter in this are the three, two, one, and nine buttons. So then just run a redstone line underneath four, five, six, and seven, and eight. Yeah, that would be really, really easy, but the problem is three starts off as being correct, but then for the rest of the combination is incorrect. So, <laughs> It makes it really difficult. Right, the first thing is to make it reset itself when we have the correct combination. Second thing is to run redstone lines that only give an output when the incorrect number has been pressed on any given line. So for example, on this one, I am going to give an output on every single number other than the number three. And this one two, this one one, and this one nine. And then I run it into this circuit, which checks to see if the RS latch has been triggered. And I might, I might have actually done it here. So. If we press number seven, for example, we get ourselves an output. If we press the number eight, you know, we press the number nine. Yeah, we're still getting outputs. If I press the number three, I don't get an output. But then if I press the number three again, I also don't, I also don't get an output, which is good. <laughs> yeah. Is, is it? Yes, it is. I don't know. <laughs> yes, because, yeah, because if I press any number, it shouldn't change. Yes, this is good. <laughs> Evidently, I'm losing my marbles, but I genuinely think we might be onto a winner here, okay? Despite my confusion, I think this could be working. It was not working. And that is because I haven't been so smart with these, and I've made it so that no matter what number you press, even if it's the correct number, you will always get a fire through the incorrect number circuit. And that is because Although I've told this thing to ignore previous modules, we did well there, I haven't told it to ignore future modules, which means that, for example, when I put the number three in, this one says, hey, it's meant to be number two, this one says, hey, it's meant to be number one, and this one says, hey, it's meant to be number nine, and they all fire an incorrect input signal, which is definitely suboptimal. So now I have to work out how to connect them, and honestly, I don't know how I'm going to do it. Maybe this system works, so this means that any input that comes into the incorrect numbers circuit won't be outputted if it comes from further down the line than the relevant module, which makes it sound a lot more intelligent than it actually is. All was going well, but we've had the biggest breakage. This, this is a break that can't actually be fixed. You would have to go into the back and move the things around in the RS null latch. Huge problem. And it basically occurs when you get the correct number, but then you press the same number again, it, it triggers a weird thing. It triggers a very weird thing. And it's because of the way that I've done this, and the only way to counteract it is this big horrible circuit here, but I think everything is working, except it wasn't. Okay, well firstly, minor aesthetic change. We now have an actual nine digit number pad. Secondly, the system was not spam proof in the slightest. So I've now added spam proofing so you can't break it. And thirdly, and very importantly, the dropper system that I had going on actually sort of gave away the combination. You see, if you got the correct number, it wouldn't make a noise. As soon as you got it wrong, it would click, which is, yeah, that's, that's a bit rubbish, isn't it? I can't believe I didn't notice until the very end. So I've swapped out all of the droppers for hoppers, done a little bit of rewiring. It's now silent and also quite a lot more compact, except it is still definitely enormous. Regardless, it works. So our correct combination is three, two, one, nine. And you can see everything opens up nicely. This piston door might be my finest work, by the way. I mean, look at this closing. Look <laughs> at this closing animation. Now, if I type in the numbers three, two, Five, that is the incorrect code, and you can see we had the first two correct, but then it resets itself. And if I type in something like three, two, one, and then one again, those are the first three correct numbers, but then I've repeated a number, which is actually slightly challenging for this system to deal with, but as you saw, everything resets, our door definitely doesn't open. As far as I can tell, there is absolutely no way for me to break this system, and that makes me very happy. You see, this system may be big, okay? It may be worse in pretty much all measurable ways to designs that came out more than 10 years ago, but it's mine. I came up with it. I, I, I actually, I invented the nine digit combination lock. You know, like 11 years after it was initially invented. And of course, at this point, now that I actually understand how the system works, I could go away and do a ton of compacting, make it really small. But I don't need to. All I wanted to do is understand how these things worked because I never got them. I never got them. 
and I'm very proud of myself. So if you want to see more of me inventing things that have already been invented, then please do let me know down in the comment section. Let me know what you want to see me invent next. But anyway, hope you enjoyed and I'll catch you in the next one. See ya!